Coconut. <gasps> oh my gosh. Hi. Let me just wait for my Twitch to catch up here. Look at us. It's just us, the two of us here in this big old window. Hi, everybody. Hooray. Welcome. Oh my gosh. I'm so nervous and excited. It has been a while since we have done one of these one on one games, and they're always a little bit weird, but we, we promise that uh, we'll, we'll fill this up with our, our two magical voices. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you, Space Hamster. This is like after hours, but 100% more suffering. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, we'll see. <laughs> That's true. I don't, don't know. Say maybe. That. Uh, yeah, uh, for those of you who haven't heard, um, this is the ARC 2 season finale episode. Uh, we'll get to that in the recap in a bit, but so it's it's uh, going to be a big game. Lots of cool stuff. We've we've made it this far with Arnadel. Um, Almost. Yeah, uh, I guess. Okay. All right. We're good. So we're going to go ahead and let's just jump in. Let's just do it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Venture Maidens Podcast. Uh, my name is Celeste Konowich, and I'm going to be your DM. Uh, my name is Brittany Quintero. I'm playing Arnadella Thillier, Moon Elf Warlock, who is scared shitless right now, but has a sense of purpose. Yeah. Um, and I thought, instead of just recapping last episode, can we do a little recap of what has happened in this arc so far to Arnadel? Just like a... <laughs> Go ahead and let's explain it to, to the folks at home, Brittany. What's been going on with I, Arnold? <laughs> um, well, I did do some personal recapping today by listening to some of the past episodes, just to make sure all my I'm minding my all, all my P's and Q's. Mm -hmm. I definitely recap emotionally pretty frequently throughout the episodes. Like in pivotal moments, I'm like, all this shit happened to Arnadel, and this is how she's why she's uh, reacting emotionally. But, um, yeah, so much. It's been blood and carnage, lots of tears and emotional apathy, but, like, a deep cavernous in, in, uh, interior cavern. I guess all caverns are interior. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like, this uh, – I'm going to do my best to paraphrase. Uh, after getting saving Rem and mm -hmm. uh, 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 Sawyer – Mm -hmm. um, it's weird doing this one on one. I'm so much more right? nervous than I know because I'm just looking at you like it's just us <laughs> and the internet. Ugh. Hi. Good, uh, good thing we're really good friends. Otherwise, this would be super it's awkward. Weird. It's super weird. I mean, one on one games are always, you know, well, uh, <laughs> a, a toss up, but yeah. it'll be fine. Yeah. Um. So yeah, she realized uh, she didn't realize there was a long period of time. Arnadel just thought that she was really thumping smart and was able to finally tap into the powers that she had been studying for so long. Um, didn't seem to have a lot to do with alchemy, but she was like, eh, I've read a enough books. Like, yeah, this makes sense. I'm elf. So uh, I'm power, you know, uh, magical. But then we found out that Dendar, the night serpent and world leader, one who wants to enslave many worlds, uh, took an interest in me and was like, hey, you want me to help you out right now? You want to save your friends? All right. <laughs> Just say yes. And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. And she gave me a bell and we were able to deal with it and then showed up to the village of Yalothanol and some fucking Yonti showed up to get, you know, bring me in. I'm there, the repo guys, and mm -hmm. I'm the, the good. So uh, that went down very poorly um, and <laughs> almost lost some friends, definitely lost a whole village of elves. I, I don't know. Arnadel's going to want to do some, uh, what's the word, like when you reconcile reparations reparations yeah she's yeah. gonna want to visit that at some point uh, anyway we, we were able to kind of get through that friendship wise with Kara and Saya mo mostly Kara um so I was like I believe you it's fine like the heart <laughs> the heart of our group yeah uh, whereas Kara's like mm, fuck magic hey. and everything that it stands for <laughs> this um, was a problem <laughs> big problem um I no longer part of the sisters of sorrow technically um, considering that I don't have the mark on my hand anymore and I have lost my ability, uh, the gift of the future. And uh, so now I, it was told that I would be able to kind of like switch out my patrons uh, through some fancy finagling. Uh, there was a prophecy that I had to be told about later and uh, we've been on one hell of a mission to get through that prophecy. Uh, blood has been spilled. Powers. Your own. Even. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> power, uh, almost losing Kara and Saya along the way many times. Um, so much, so much. Did I do it justice? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So essentially the whole path that we've been on is uh, the only way to get out of the situation with Dendar is to find a bigger, badder patron to take you on. Mm -hmm. And that was decided that it would be the Raven Queen. So in that prophecy, you uh, were told how to get to the Raven Queen. You had to get the knife, you had to travel through the wilds to find the gate. And then just give us a summary real quick of what happened last time. Oh, God. Uh, by the way, we also found out a lot about Rem. And it's a lot. immensely satisfying, but also raises a lot more questions. But Arnadel's smart enough to know and be like, you know what? We're just going to, I have my, I can put together enough to know that it's best to just not know. Um, she she had a couple pivotal questions. She, she needed to make sure she wasn't undead because mm-hmm. that was a little scary. She's like, I'm breathing, <laughs> but am I breathing? Um, the last episode we battled, it was quite an intense battle. It was next to impossible, but somehow we prevailed with a little bit of aid from uh, ba- Bacchus? Baca. Baca. Baca, yeah. which was uh, touching because Arnadel's missing Aaron Shadewalker, this big giant lord of horses, and she's like, oh. Anyway, um, <laughs> we were able to – that was crazy. There were so many critters that we had – critters, cute, right? <laughs> <laughs> the headless horseman, cute critter, Heck. you know. Who is, like, controlling the weather by means of lightning, and Arnadel's down with lightning, but this was way different. She's like, oh, yeah. this is evil lightning. There was a hat, a wind hag, uh, I think. I don't really actually know. Yeah, there were little lightning gremlins. Lightning There's gremlins. A bunch of stuff going oh on. Oh my god! And then um, we, so Baka showed up to help us out, which was tight, but not before Saya fucking killed the headless horseman, right? Like uh, Saya was out for majority of the fight because yeah, that, and then popped up yeah that last round of the roundhouse kick to the blow. fucking face, yeah. man. Um, not well. I mean, Kara did some major damage too, and I was just like, eh, "I can revive you." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a new sweet, sweet companion that might uh, revisit us later. Randy, Randy, Brandy used to be Brandy uh, or Brandy. Brandy. So many name <laughs> changes. Um, so we might have a new agent for the Sisters of Sorrow, which we're all very excited about. Um, and then, yeah, so I, we approached the gate after having a Capri Sun and some orange wedges in that short <laughs> rest. Uh, and then I, re- I kind of already knew what to do. Rem, we learned a little bit more about Rem with that whole weird blood situation. <laughs> We're like, mm, let, we'll just <laughs> glaze over it. Sliced through the, the veil, cut the veil. Mm-hmm. Yep. Went in and nobody else could go in with me. Yep. So that is exactly where we're picking up today. We had just finished that big fight. Uh, You all had kind of caught your breath, and then you had proceeded with the ritual to open the gate to the Raven Queen's realm. Uh, So you had cut the veil between worlds, and as you had passed through with the knife, you had felt everything seal behind you. So now you are alone, and that is where we're going to begin today. So, as you step through the gate, you don't really feel anything. When you were standing in the presence of the gate itself, there was so much power and magic infused in this thing that you were just hypercharged, basically, by everything going on. And suddenly, as you take this step, it all just sort of fades. Everything becomes dull. That sense of power totally goes away. And the next thing you take in is this feeling of, mist Mm. like that just sort of walking through a cloud of mist yeah Mm. cold clammy and then you find yourself standing on a stone floor and across from you you see that there is a gate a much smaller gate than the one you saw before that seems to have delicate carvings upon it and as you look you see that you're in some kind of plaza it seems like so there's just stone beneath you and you see buildings of a large city that stretch out in front of you but everything is encompassed by this kind of just gray heavy mist Mm. and as you look around you see that you are standing underneath a gate identical to the gate directly across from you Mm. and then there are actually six of these gates in total around this area with stone benches almost like a park Uh, you see that there are empty beds where maybe plants used to be 
um, looking around, yeah, buildings everywhere, reaching up into the sky. The city just seems to stretch on. You can see that there are walls uh, surrounding the city off in the distance. The only thing you don't see is people. Hmm. It is completely silent. Quick question. It's mm -hmm. an important one. Is Alistair Fitzpatrick wrapped around my neck in his usual yes. place? Yes. Okay. <laughs> he is wrapped around your neck. And as you take this all in, he begins to shake with fear. Mm -hmm. And you just, that mist again, it just feels oppressive. Something about this place, it's just, it's uncomfortable. It just feels somber and empty Heavy. and so, so quiet. I don't like it. Um, I, I don't even say anything. I'm just kind of like, I, yeah. I, uh, so these six gates, are they portals or are they just empty archways? As you're looking at them now, they just appear to be empty archways. All of them are carved beautifully mm. uh, with what looks like vines and like flower motifs. Um, like I said, they're much smaller, so they're probably like a standard door sized, but they're just stationed in the middle of this seeming yeah plaza courtyard whatever this was Oof. um i don't i do i have a i'm gonna roll maybe like an insight check to see if i have some innate sense of maybe where to go sure i know maybe that's okay that's not bad um insight that's gonna be uh an unnatural 20. Okay, uh, you have no idea. The ritual to open this gate kind of came to you. You seem to have knowledge of how to do that. You've had general knowledge up to this point of where to go, but now that you're here and that you've arrived, it's just that empty feeling again. And, okay. and just the silence weighing in. And it's, it's sort of hard to think at all in this place i'm gonna make one video game reference for this this and this will be it i'm, I'm gonna be good is you this... can do it as much as you want. it's your and mine game i'm expecting a great deal of references <laughs> is this like the alluvian crossroads uh except in the middle of the city oh that's so cool um that's immediately what i was envisioning whenever yeah. you explained it because it's like misty and, and other dimension -y, mm -hmm. and there's all these gates and, and you said benches and i'm like ooh. um all right <laughs> so that's what i'm envisioning so, so it is like that where it's just all of these gates across yeah. from each other, but smack in the middle of this huge urban city that seems to have no people, no animals, nothing. Nothing. I, Considering that maybe this might be some weird, logically, this is what logically makes sense. This might be some weird extension of the Feywilds. Arnadel remembers what Randy said while we, navigating us, and just she doesn't know what the Raven Queen looks like or what exactly she's looking for. But I guess that sense of purpose. She's hoping that she's like, all right, I'm gonna think of that sense of purpose and just walk forward. Yep. So you begin to walk, looking for something, trying to get some kind of vibe as you take off down these streets. So you pass under one of these gates on the opposite side, and nothing happens. No magic flares up around you uh you just walk down this wide street that was probably a main road at some point and you see that there are buildings that used to be businesses maybe on both sides of you every once in a while you see a few stacked on top of each other that was probably like apartments maybe where people lived you do see like abandoned carts on the street you see stalls uh there's no food or anything organic mm -hmm. around but it just looks like everybody just up and left. Um, go ahead and make a perception check for me. I'll just keep this in front of me. Uh, that's going to be a 17. Okay. As you are just scanning the scenery and looking around, uh, you swear you hear the sound of a child laughing coming from somewhere off to your right. And as that catches your attention because it just it's so different from the silence you're now getting accustomed mm. to. You see a bright red ball rolls out from between an alleyway into the center of the street. Uh, is it like at my feet or do I have to walk? Okay, I, I As pick. if somebody in the alley just 
rolled the ball. Um, I pick it up and I turn into that direction. I'm not gonna move though. I'm I'm remembering like I'm not gonna go off. I just turn and I say, um, "Hello." You think you hear the sounds of more laughing, but it seems like it's coming from far away, and the sounds of little feet running off down that alleyway. Then you hear the sound of a dog barking from somewhere off to your left. Um, I'm like, okay, my I would need to use my big brain. I'm like, okay, um, I'm in a weird place. This isn't normal. It's very magical. Um, I guess I, I would do an Arcana check just to be like, all right, is this? I I I want to. The thought is like, the, this place is fucking with me. It's meant to try to get to me, is what she's thinking. Um, and her arcana check, I guess, or would insight be better? Uh, go ahead and make an arcana. Okay. Um, that's a 17. Okay. So immediately what comes to you when you start trying to recall, like, more about where you are, trying to piece things together, this place feels very similar to somewhere you've been before. When you first encountered the Sisters of Sorrow, um, where that- I thought you were going to say Waterdeep. I'm like- no, no, no. Uh, no, it de- definitely doesn't look like Waterdeep. All of the architecture and everything looks, you would say, like, proto-elven. Oh, like, wow. Really, like, old, old, like, very basic. Like, when elves finally, some of them started moving out of the forest and the first cities and settlements they were making, uh, not not in the trees, that- essentially. That's what this looks like. It's super exciting in that split second when I realize I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, oh, this is so cool. But also, like, the reality of the situation creeps back. And I'm like, uh, ooh. Okay, anyway. Sisters of Sorrow. Right. So the atmosphere feels very similar to that first time you you went into that castle and you went through these trials to meet them. Yeah. uh, When you had determined that that was part of the Shadow Fell. Ah. So you think that's where you are now. Okay. Um... With the 17, forgive me, this is a little bit of metagaming because I just cracked open Curse of Strahd the other day. <laughs> um, okay. You are not in Barovia. Right, but I think that's an extension of the shadow. Well, anyway, we can get into that later. Um, I rem- I think I'm like, okay, Shadowfell, um, this, is, this place is going to probably try, not try, but there's like a weird sentience with these other planes. And I'm like, okay, I just got to keep my wits about me. Um, and I'm like, I just, I calmly set the ball back down on the ground and I press forward. Mm-hmm. And as you press forward, uh, you continue down the street until it starts dividing off more and more as the road seems to be thinning, as you're getting into more residential area. Uh, and you see now as you're walking down the streets, there are these large like pole structures uh, that have baskets on top of them that are lining the roads and as you continue forward and the road kind of begins to curve um, these lights suddenly flare up in these baskets at the top so like street lamps illuminating now uh, with this golden light that seems to point in this direction towards this large squat building in the middle of this kind of plaza center where that has a bunch of these empty little terraces or like maybe where trees used to be but everything organic again has been either torn out or gone you're not sure but the lights are absolutely pointing you towards this building i walk i kind of pick up my step a little bit and i walk like i'm you know like when you're running errands and you're on a mission Mm -hmm. i'm gonna go i'm just gonna walk Mm -hmm. and as you pass by another one of these alleys a blue ball comes rolling out into the street and that sound of laughter comes off to your right i kneel down i pick it up but this time i put the ball in my bag okay and keep walking all right like are you following the Mm -hmm. oh i was gonna say just like a split second like pick it up put it like unfazed and uh um yeah continue walking the lit path Mm -hmm. As you walk, you swear you begin to hear the sounds of people and wagon wheels turning and shatter, like, of a marketplace. It, it just comes from everywhere and nowhere as you look, and the mist obscures everything and gives everything this kind of hazy round edge, but you swear you see shadows moving in there, like, 
of people belonging to these voices. Final, like, spirited away. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> See, let's just keep them going. <laughs> I'm sorry you do such a good job. It made, like, all I have are movie and game references. Spirited away. Like, the girl, like, loses her parents, oh, yeah. literally turns into a ghost town. And that, yeah. And then they suddenly. Dude, that scene is so freaking scary. Oh, my God. I know. But this is, like, even more scary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So she's, uh, she's just probably similar to that girl, but she kind of knows what's up. That girl was, like, totally, you know, had no idea. Um, I, I'm just like, all right. Uh, something's happening i think maybe because of i'm getting closer to where i need to be it's going to probably trigger reactions in this realm um i'm definitely an outsider so i'm just gonna have my wits about me maybe um i don't know if i can ready i'm gonna ready eldritch blast um but cautiously like i'm not just gonna blast the first thing that you know like pops up i'm just gonna be ready with it yeah so your hand like sort of glows with an arcane light like you're just on the edge of you know you could you could definitely snap one off if you wanted to yeah Uh, yeah and as you continue walking towards this building so this seems to be some kind of you would guess administrative building again all of the the architecture of these buildings is very crude very simple um there is lots of beautiful carvings on everything but everything is mostly just functional Mm -hmm. at this point um, so there are these set of double doors uh, that appear, and as you approach, uh, the two sconces on either side of the door begin to glow with a golden light as well. Again, recalling Randy's uh, suggestions of politeness and friendship uh, and making a, a, a concerted effort, a concentrated effort to move forward, I knock purposefully mm-hmm. on the doors. And as you rap upon the chamber door, no, uh, so the doors (laughs) immediately to your touch swing open and you see that there is this long, totally dark hallway stretching out in front of you that no matter how hard you try, you can't see the end of. Okay. I continue. Mm -hmm. And as you walk forward in the dark, your eyes begin to adjust. Uh, you see that there are large mirrors on both sides of you so as you're walking it's just this set of mirrors and like two feet away another set of mirrors that go floor to ceiling and so you're just staring two reflections of yourself as you continue down this hallway oh man um i'd like to do a i don't know investigation check or perception check to see if i notice anything about about my reflection that's different in these mirrors (laughs) or if they're just regular ass mirrors Definitely. Uh, hold on, sorry. I always forget where it's at. That's uh, 14. Okay. Uh, for a long time, you're walking down this hallway and you don't notice anything. But as you start to catch your reflection more and more, you notice that something about yourself is changing. As you go down each and each of these mirrors, you seem to be getting older. And it takes a really long time for you to notice because elves live a great while and age very, very slowly. But sure enough, as you go, your hair begins to turn gray and you begin to see wrinkles as you move down and you begin to feel yourself grow heavier. a horrible nightmare. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I see that and I, I check my arm skin and I check my face and I'm like, oh my God, okay. But I press forward. You feel fine. You feel normal. I don't. But like if you it. look at your reflection, you're not. You're getting older and older as you pass down this hallway. There's that small part of me that's like, not too bad. That's all mm-hmm. right. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> and as you again keep walking, and now to the point where like, you would be approaching the end of your life, looking at these reflections in the mirror here. Uh, you begin to hear footsteps again coming in front of you and you see a figure run down the hall coming towards you very very small figure i would like you to describe what arnadel looked like when she was like seven or eight years old oh god (laughs) um uh, probably very sweet and in uh her the the knees of her little 
leggings or pants that she's wearing underneath her robes might have some like uh, holes in them because mm-hmm. she's got a lot of energy mm-hmm. and her hair would probably not be as well kept as it is currently you know she's gotten better at being meticulous with her appearance but you know maybe I, like I, loose ponytail i think it was right after the phase where you got uh glue in it when you were playing around so your mom had to just like chop a big yeah. <laughs> big piece out of Super. it so now you've got the awkward like short bangs in front like totally one of those kids that was a handful but it was just because they had like just so much to look just at so much curiosity <laughs> out of craziness mm-hmm. um big bright green eyes just like you know mm-hmm. constantly analyzing things um mm-hmm. so you see yourself as a child just comes running at you from the darkness presumably on the other side you don't know exactly where she came from but she stands in front of you and she looks up at you and she's clutching a yellow ball in her hands and she puts a finger to her lips in a shh gesture and then she beckons you to follow her down the hall I, in all level of, like, complete shock that would be, would merit this situation, <laughs> I think I would actually probably grab her hand mm-hmm. and follow. Yeah, so she clutches the, the yellow ball in one hand, and then as you take her hand, she just beams up at you with that kind of, that toothy smile it used to have uh, before it filled in. I the little gap. my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah oh my god it's so fucking emo- like uh, anyway yeah so she takes your your big hand in hers and she makes a sharp left towards one of these mirrors and before you know it she is pulling you through the surface of this mirror I... and the world opens up into another very large room and again she looks up at you and puts her finger to her lips it's kind of hard because she's got the ball in one hand so she's trying to like just a lot of things going on Mm -hmm. Uh, and then this room in front of you appears to be like a great hall of some kind so you see large stone pillars and then there are carpets all over the floor again everything is in these sort of muted grayish colors um dark souls (laughs) right and there are people in this room there are a lot of people in this room like people physically or just like shadowy representations so people who are some of them are just sprawled on the ground maybe they look asleep there are people sitting cross-legged there are some people just standing staring vapidly at that something before them something that you can't see you hear the sounds of weeping coming from around the room just many many people of all different races and walks of life just littering this room Okay, I walked into a concentration camp. They aren't in uniforms of any kind, and they aren't engaged with each other at all. It's like they're all experiencing something that they can. you can see their eyes moving back and forth, watching things like, oh. in front of them, or the people on the ground like clutching themselves. They're clearly experiencing something, or you hear people shying away like they're hearing things over and over again. Uh, I absolutely do not want to, uh, I don't want to enter- engage with any of these people. I'm like, I just know that if there's something super magical that's how, ha- oh, I don't know this, but I'm assuming, I'm guessing that if there's some crazy magic at work, it could actually, if, I'm worried that it'll do harm if I pull them from that or try to take them away from it mm-hmm. or shake their, whatever's happening. So or it might happen to me. So I'm just like, I just kind of look down at, at my younger self and I at, to see if maybe she has one. Yeah, you know. and she raises her eyebrows and gives you a really serious expression, like shaking her head no, and then ushers for you to follow, like creep along the wall with her around I these people. Totally follow suit in the mm-hmm. same way that she's doing. Uh, why don't you go ahead and make a stealth check for me? Oh, little you is like real fucking stealthy. Yeah, duh, because I had to like sneak around my parents and so many cookies stolen. Oh, yeah, um, it's an uh, an unnatural twenty. Okay, wow, y'all, yeah, y'all, y'all are fine. As you're just They've you done this before. Yeah, you fade into the shadow, and as you are holding her and you know holding her hand, 
you can't help but remember all of that you know it was so long ago and things have been so hard lately that just all of these little memories yeah those sneaky moments the things you got away with when you were younger all the trouble you got into just seems to flood your consciousness you can't you can't stop as long as you're touching your hand it just keeps yeah. coming i'm on an adventure with my self and memories with myself. <laughs> uh the best kind of adventure love yourself <laughs> Uh, so you guys sneak around the edge of this large room until you come to, uh, what would be the wall of this room, except it also looks like just a very large mirror is covering the surface. So you see all of these people in whatever state they're in reflected back at you. And once again, she begins to push a hand through the mirror, intending to lead you through it. I don't see any reason not to follow. Mm Mm-hmm. And as you step through, it's totally, it's not like walking through anything. It's just suddenly you're on the other side. There's no tactile experience of passing through this whatsoever. (laughs) You just appear in a different place. Okay. And here we appear at the moment when you were first leaving to go to school. Your parents are there. What does it look like? What was that moment? What happened? Where were you? I, it's very different seeing this from her adult perspective, which she remembers it, and now it's quite a paradox. Because in that moment when she was leaving, she was like, fucking bye, like, bye, like, get the, get, like, bye, I can't, like, could not wait to, mm-hmm. to go off and, like, learn more stuff, and she was so excited to go to school. And I would imagine what she sees as an adult makes her feel a little bit maybe bittersweet because she still has that that memory of just like the wild excitement of this like new horizon but she probably notices the sadness in her parents like that's that new phase of life that their kid is about to like embark upon they're basically losing their kid to an extent you know they're as she not into adulthood but that's the first steps into that and it makes her very nostalgic and sentimental about maybe, wow, I should probably talk to my parents some more. So it's like really gripping to see that remembering how exciting and like kind of self-absorbed it was to only think about her future with that. But like, uh, also see getting to see her parents visage Mm -hmm. and her family's visage, like in the middle of that. So she's just like, fuck. (laughs) <laughs> what do your parents look like? Who does Arnadel take after? Her dad. Mm-hmm. So he looks a lot like you. What does your mom look like? A really pretty elf that um, has gray eyes and her hair is, is like kind of salt and peppered. Um, you know, pulled back in a tight austere bun. She's kind of an, more the austere one. Uh, and her dad is like a very kind and like loving looking moon elf that is, you know, works very hard, but also is kind of goofy at the same time, if that makes sense. Like very, mm-hmm. I don't want to say jovial because he's like, they're both lean and in great shape, but like healthy, fucking mm-hmm. great, like your typical suburban parents, I guess. <laughs> like well respected. Yeah. yeah, like they work out and eat healthy and like raise their kids and after school programs and all that fun shit. But like, mm-hmm. uh, she definitely takes after her dad. Handsome mm-hmm. elf. Um, and so as you pass through this scene, which is like in the family entryway of your house, you know, you see young teen Arnadel like loaded up with like dragging a trunk. Can't wait to, to get out the door with your mom just... You know, she's so reserved usually, but she's just standing extra in the corner. You see her hands are clasped so tight and you can tell she is trying not to cry with all of her might. And wrenches her heart. She's just Mm -hmm. like, I don't, I never noticed that. Mm -hmm. And as you pass through, your, your little self just tugs on your hand and pulls you over towards the entryway door, leaving the scene behind. And you step through another wall of glass. That was a and this, hard thing to watch. <laughs> and this time, you're in complete darkness. This is somewhere you've been before. And as your eyes attune 
to this surrounding, you can tell you're in a subterranean chamber of some kind, somewhere dark underground. And you can see off in the gis- distance this door, this huge door, and you hear the sound of hissing coming from all around you. Does this, does this trigger a memory? It does. Mm. This is the exact same thing you saw when you were last in going through that trial to see the the Sisters of Sorrow for the first time. That exact memory comes back to you, and this all feels familiar and like you've had this nightmare a thousand times. Ra- you would think I would be scared, but I'm actually, it triggers a deep, quiet, seething anger of like, like the how dare you type. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Mm. And you feel your little self presses close to you as she's, she's very afraid. Um, I pick her up onto my hip. Mm-hmm. You know, like when you hold a kid and you, you mm-hmm. sling them onto your hip. Yeah. And uh, I'm angry. I, I walk forward uh, very mm-hmm. unafraid. Like I'm fucking ready to throw mm-hmm. down for that. And as, as you pass, the hissing and the whispering grows louder, but it's in this alien language. <laughs> One of these as I'm walking through. Even the bird as you're holding a kid, like, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, and so you continue onwards, and your little self, she holds out her hand until you encounter another mirror that you didn't know was there until you pass through it. And then in your next moment, you're standing in an overstuffed den with three women in front of you the sisters as they are there you are just surrounded by armchairs everywhere and you see yourself you see Kara and Saye crammed into these chairs as you see that moment when you encountered the sisters of Sara for the first time and you see yourselves talking and you hear the sound of a scribbling pen you just hear it all around you yeah I'm just like fuck okay And as you push on forward, the door on the other side swings open and you see all of these skines of yarn again pulling tight as you saw that web of fate for the first time. And these three golden threads that shine very clearly, patching together a hole that is forming in this web. Do I notice... So this is a memory. I I feel like... I'm like, okay, I'm totally reliving... And memories but is there anything different do i notice like a difference in this or is it just memory on replay go ahead and make a perception or Ooh. yeah perception or investigation whatever is better it's the same for me um, <laughs> i'm just so good at seeing that is a 26 okay um there's nothing there's nothing directly different. You definitely saw things this way before, mm-hmm. but you get the sense that these things are being strung together and arranged for you. It's like somebody picked these memories and they want you to see them in the sequence and in this way. It's like watching a movie of memories from your head, right? Like the way they cut it and yeah. flash from scene to scene. So it's not different. But you get the feeling that this is all engineered so there's an for some intention. purpose. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm grateful for that shock of awareness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, huh? Okay, I'm a little bit more not skeptical, but like uh, leery and keen. Like, okay, what's gonna be next? And as you push on through, you walk through this web of yarn. You pass into a new room. And this is one you've never been in before. This is something entirely new. It appears to be a study of some kind. So you see like there's a writing desk. You see that there are a couple chairs put around um, lights in the room. It's actually pretty cozy. Mm. Uh, You see that on the far side of the room, there are a set of double doors that are currently open. There's no breeze, but it leads out onto a balcony. The curtains are still there. And you see over the city that you entered in before is stretched out below this balcony but this room is also crammed full of just 
objects. Like when you look at the walls, there are hundreds and hundreds of portraits on the walls. And then there are also these big, tall bookcases that just are stuffed to absolute capacity with books. Like people have shoved books like on top, in the middle, like just it's, they're stacked on the floor around the shelves and all of these portraits. And as you watch, they're just pictures of people, families, everything. And as you watch them a little bit more in between blinking, you see that they shift. They shift to different people, different faces, different families, oh. different snapshots in time. And the same thing with the books. As you look, the titles change, the languages change. There's just every blink of your eye, there's something new, just new information. Wow. Coming in. That's very overwhelming. I, I, because of my, the, her analytical nature of wanting to like zoom in and like process something, it probably it's, makes her a little dizzy. Oh yeah, it's totally it's way overload. Like you you start to feel a little bit sick yeah. like as you look. Like, uh, I'm like I don't have time to process this right now. Like I mm -hmm. so I kind of shake it off and I'm like holy moly, yeah. like this is a big deal. Like where the there, fuck am I? And there's one other feature about this room that immediately catches your attention. There are two tall like perches in this room and sitting atop each is a raven. That is easily the size of like a bloodhound. So Ooh. two huge ravens. That spitting. probably startles the shit out of me when I realize it. It's like, oh fuck. Like, am I still holding my tiny self? Uh-huh. I like clutch her you know, protectively, but also kind of start you know, being startled. Um, yeah. and I'm just like I hold her head, you know, to kind of to my chest, like defensively, and I'm just like, fuck. Mm-hmm. And uh, as you do so, and you realize that behind you now is just a normal study door that, that is closed as you've passed in here. And then the bird on the right opens its beak and you hear, it's all right, you can put me down. And it sounds like a young child's voice. Oh my God, are you serious? Yeah, and your little self is just looking up at you. I, with wide eyes. I very carefully put her down and I fucking kneel with the utmost respect because <laughs> I think I know who this is. Mm -hmm. And she she looks at you curiously for a moment and then sort of nods her head. And then she goes and walks behind the desk and like sits in the armchair. And of course she's too little. So she just sits up and like her feet are swinging on the edge and then the raven opens its mouth again so we finally meet take a seat i do <laughs> carefully you know like when you're just like very gently you sit delicately i sit delicately onto the uh the chair and i fold my hands uh in in my lap and i uh nervously kind of touch uh alistar fritz patrick's tail and i'm just like mm -hmm. hi and alistar is totally shaking at this point too like eyeing these giant ravens yeah. on either side of the room that could easily snap him up in one bite i want to take a brief moment to like kind of uh like soothe him with you know that that telepathic bond of just like shh it's okay like it's fine mm -hmm. this is right and uh, the raven on the right side again opens up its mouth. Does this one make you uncomfortable? Uh, th this one? This form. Um, I, a little bit. It's, uh, I, I don't know if I can ask. Are you asking if I would prefer you to change forms? Yes, it is a matter of but a thought. Oh. And she goes ahead and she, she snaps her little fingers. And then sitting before you uh, is Aaron Shade Walker sitting in the chair. Oh, and it it's like, that's even harder. And she's like, uh, my lady, if, it, if it's okay, I would love to see you as you. It's, this is hard. I'm sorry. Hmm. Seeing us as us. It has been a while. And uh, and that, again, Aaron's voice was now coming from the raven on the right side. It's too this hard. This person in front of you has never 
opened their mouth at any point. Mm. Uh, and then again, there's a snap. And sitting in the chair before you is uh, this elven woman. She appears to be maybe like 17, 18, if that, um, with like dark, dark ebony skin and these black piercing eyes that just glint with, you're not even sure what it is. It's it's something almost manic, mm. like just so not, like she's looking at 700 different things at the same time. And she's wearing this very strange, it's like a form-fitted black sort of coat jacket thing. Like you, you Brittany, would recognize this as like a, a well-cut suit. Mm. Very well-tailored. Mm-hmm. Cool. And, um, uh, and she, she sits there and she crosses a leg and kind of leans back in her chair, just looking at you. I'm kind of confused as to whether or not I look at her or the raven that speaks. Uh, and I, I, I'm like, okay. It's like when you're in the back of a car, like, do you look at the mirror or the back of the person's head? <laughs> yeah. Um, who, who am I talking uh, to? Yeah. So I, I just, I decide to just continue looking at her in front of me. And uh, I don't know what to say. Well, you've worked very hard to get here. <laughs> so uh, I suppose I know the generals of, of why you've come, but I'm ready to hear your case. Um, oh, I, mm. okay, so she kind of steals herself and she's like, all right, this is it. This is the conversation. Um, you suddenly feel like you're in a job interview. Yeah, <laughs> like kind that, of. that whole you're sitting at a desk and it's like, and these two ravens are staring down at you, and she is looking at you with these eyes that just don't seem to even focus yeah. on you. It's all very bizarre. She she can't you know like if you were wearing a tie you would like straighten it kind of mm -hmm. um, you know she smooths <laughs> out her her robes and she's kind of like kind of re -gather, she gathers herself and she's like. I, um, I'm tired of not knowing. I don't know what my purpose is. And, uh, you know, as of recent events, it seems that there is a path that is opening up in front of me. And I want to grip the reins and um, take charge in the direction that I'm going. I feel that... Um, there was a brief moment where I signed a contract that I should have taken a closer look at. Um, I care so much about protecting my friends more than anything else. And it bit me in the ass. And while that desire is still my top priority, I would like to be a lot more cautious with it. And uh, I've been advised that this is what I need to do. And with each step forward that I take, it actually goes beyond the advice that was given to me. And I feel deeply that I am making the right choice for myself. Hmm. You do feel deeply about everything. It's fascinating. And she looks at you again for a moment Dendar is powerful, but not so powerful that I could not handle her or make this go away. But what use will you be to me? Why should I make the effort? What can you give me? Wow. And at this point, the raven on the left for the first time, like, cause and it just fills up the room with this booming sharp sound that just is completely alarming unfazed <laughs> i'm like tapped in um you know because of her emotional nature she's able to also override things that would be unnerving to most and arnadel actually feels very calm at this question and she answers with well i'm assuming that you've Ha been watching some degree of what's been happening and what I've explained to you and I don't f 
feel like I need to explain it, but to answer your question, because I feel like you already know this, I am fiercely loyal to the things that I care about. And no, I don't know much about you, but something's telling me that I need you to be the best that I can be for the things that I care the most about. And I've been very lost with all of the things that have been happening. You know, like I've always, my pursuit of knowledge has always been my uh, point on the horizon. And that's been completely obliterated with the bullshit that Dendar pulled recently. And now more than ever, I just want to have that point on my horizon again. So what? And she's like, she's like, fuck, am I about to ask this? She's like, I know what I can bring for you. Are you going to be able to do that for me? And she immediately lip just quirks up like at a, at a very amused <laughs> little, <laughs> little grin uh, in response. But she, before flattening that, that line, uh, that is within my power. All things are within my power. All that has been, all that will be, I understand and see. But tell me, you are damaged the way you are. There are memories that are locked. Can you tell me the moment, the moment you gave your soul to Dendar? It seems as if you do not remember. I remember. Yes, I think I do. Um, I've been in denial about it, but I think it was when I decided to join the Sisters of Sorrow, there was a very bizarre vision that I had, and I didn't understand it. There was more carnal desire. Not carnal. Carnal's the wrong word. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, primitive? Uh, she, she just blinked. Yeah, sorry, uh, Brittany's asking. The word carnal is not the right word. Like that savage desire, animalistic mm -hmm. desire for... Like, primal? Primal, thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. So she's... There was a very primal desire to to agree to that. Uh, I, in my vision, my headmaster, you know, my mentor asked me not to go through that door, and I did. Hmm. Yes, you did. Take out your contract. The only thing Arnadel can think to do is to grab the bell from her bag. No, not that. Your contract. The one you wrote in your own blood. I need a little help. <laughs> um, uh, she, she, she's looking at you expectantly. She's like, you do not remember the book oh that she gets arnadel gets extremely uncomfortable she's like like oh my god that's the thing that she didn't want anybody to know about it was like a filthy secret that she was just like ashamed of so she she like furrows her brow and, and horrible disgusted and shameful and she pulls it out of her bag that was deep deep you know like if your bag of holding has a secret pocket that's where it would be she pulls it out and she holds it forward to her and she's just like, oh, fuck. I will allow you to see. To see what has been hidden from you. And she she reaches out a hand and kind of, she just lightly taps your forehead. And then there's the cawing of the bird again from the left side that fills the room and the sudden sharp splitting pain comes to your head as you begin to remember things that you lost. And the book like kind of falls out of your hands there. And as it falls open, you see that there's all of this script that looks like somebody just 
completely insane. Just dried, crusted blood has been etched into this over and over again, this long, filled contract. And you begin to remember doing this, the way you stumbled down and how much you needed that power. And you were so upset and afraid and confused. And you just needed, you needed it at that moment. And you were willing to trade whatever to get it and suddenly just this huge part of you unlocks and you remember how you sacrificed snakes to summon dendar that you found this book in the library and all of this and the first time you showed this to kelvin you remember him staring at you in utter horror that is not the way it's ever been in your mind it just completely snaps open as you are staring at this book in front of you <laughs> and it all comes back how you made this dark compact wow and I feel, oh, oh, I, yeah, I just, complete shock, and I just, all I can do is stare at her. And she lets you process that for a moment, and then she leans forward and she taps the book. Can you bring me that passion? That fire, that need, that is what I want. Absolutely. I have one other condition. Then I shall grant you my patronage. All the power you could want. Dendar will be nothing but a thought. If she ever dare approach you again, well, that will be the end of her. Are you ready to hear it? Arnold's like fucking dead calm. Like res resolute. And she said, she, she, yes, please. I languish in this place, this place that is a prison, a prison of my own making, true, but still a prison. All I want is to feel something again. Give me 24 hours to walk the world as you walk the world, and you shall remain here. For 24 hours and if this is done you have my patronage and you have my power behind you the first thing that Arnadel thinks that crosses her mind is like fuck am I about to get like body swapped and then like I'm trapped here but then she's like you know what she shakes the thought because the only her main objective her like staying the course is whatever it takes to to save her friends and to help with the main mission of like what the sisters of sorrow initially asked from them you know like this new memory that had been fucking supremely locked away of her previous uh things <laughs> She's like, I have to make this right. And if this is the only way to do it, then so be it. And that's what she says. She says, so be it. I will warn you. Your time here will not leave you unchanged. You will be forever marked by it. But it'll also help you understand why I am what I am, and how to use that more effectively. Considering that Arnadel detect, I'm happy to roll an insight check if you want. I feel what I'm what I'm gathering and trying to like be in tune with what Arnadel's feeling and, and understanding. I feel like she has a pang of empathy, like deep empathy. Like considering what the, what she the Raven Queen is explaining to her. And experiencing this place and 
like kind of picking up on what she's saying she's like i she like kind of and i don't mean this in a condescending way but she wants to help her Mm -hmm. she has this like desire to like i want to help you like as another individual this is this sounds awful but also i want to help my friends so she's just kind of thinking that as as she hears the raven queen explain this and she's like yeah yeah, and it is also hard. I mean, she's like a 17-year-old girl, right? Yeah. Looking at you, explaining this. Also fucking, uh, like, way to go, Elf. Yeah. Like. Uh, and she she looks at you. She, she looks amazed, which is the, like, first real expression you've seen cross her face. Just, And she nods. And let's get this done. And she moves her hand over the book, and you see that the blood just begins to disappear from the page as she goes back and she flips through. And it's like she's just erasing it from history, from memory, as if it never was. And she summons one of the great birds. She snaps over, uh, and the bird flies over the one on the left who was just cawing this whole time. And she she takes the bird in her hands and she hands it off to you. And she says, well, she doesn't say the bird on the right says, thought. You must write the contract in its blood. And the bird looks at you. Uh, Okay, I know magic requires some funky ass like interactions or ritual. (laughs) So I'm like. I feel bad. I don't want to kill this creature, but I, um, I have to kind of, again, like there's all these conflicts and she has to like kind of steal her nerves. Mm -hmm. So she pulls out the, the knife. Um, and, and yeah. And as you do, like you, you cut its throat and this black blood just pours onto the pages and begins to reform in this swirling lettering as it goes. And she summons the bird on the other side. And she takes it in her hands and she kind of like holds it close to her. And then, and the bird says to you in your face, memory. And she looks at you and nods. I do it again. I don't feel good about it, but I'm like, it has to be done. Mm -hmm. And again, the blood spills upon the page and the pages now begin to flip of their own volition and you see the book itself begins to change it was this sort of strange almost green weird leather tome that now it shifts and it becomes pure black and you see that the the pages the cover is actually soft with this almost feathery texture to it and the book slams shut on the table and she looks at you and she opens her mouth but now her ravens are gone she can't say anything to you but she nods and then she hands you the book. I, I take it very carefully. And blackness as the second part of your deal begins. You don't remember much of your time. It seems like an eternity or maybe it was two minutes, you don't know. All you remember is pain. Your head crammed full of so many lifetimes worth of memories, of so many feelings of pain and loss and suffering, but also joy. And there's just so much, so many lifetimes, so many people, you'll just never, you'll never be able to go to sleep again without hearing the whole story without seeing it roll before you in every painful second of detail you'll never be able to sleep again peacefully that's really all you remember of your time spent in the raven queen's world and then you wake up and you're in the elysium keep it takes you a minute to adjust to the darkness as you wake up in your own bed and you feel something wet as you look at your own hands They're completely drenched in blood. And you have absolutely no recollection of how it got there. And then the next thing you hear is this little, like, 
popping sound. Um, and you see Alistar appears on the foot of your bed and he's looking at you and he's looking at you absolutely terrified. And then he begins to make this cawing sound just coming from his little mouth as you see his body starts to writhe and like convulse I, and you see yeah that i he's set up i'm like oh my god like it's almost like a hairball except he's never done anything like that so he's just like racking himself in pain all of a sudden as you see these little black feathers begin to sprout all over him and he is shifting and changing and you see his wings like reduce into these bird-like things so now he he sits before you as a raven on the edge of the bed and he's just staring at you and then he coughs and a bunch of purple glitter comes out and i i want to like like do the sensey thing you know like that mm-hmm. i'm sensing him is he the same is he my little as you sense him you sense a duality about him. He's there, but there's also something else there that seems to be sharing his space. It's very strange. It's like this double presence when you reach out. It feels like there are two beings inside of Alistar now. But I, I want to, like, calm him. I pick him up. Mm-hmm. I want to hold him. and like. Oh, yeah. And he, he isn't used to the way he looks or feels now, so he kind of flops at you and then is like makes a cawing sound and then moves his wings and like shuffles until he finally settles his little body there and like leans against you. And still, your hands are covered in blood and you have no idea I, how it got there. I, I want to, like, I, I pick him up with my gross, sticky hands. Mm-hmm. carefully like he's got little he's so he's fully a raven mm-hmm. so i do the thing where you give your hand and kind of like get it up onto the shoulder i'm just like uh, and i yeah and he, he jumps up there and i'm like okay it's okay just hold on just hold on you know like and and, and i i have i leap out of my bed and i i want to run down the hall to see to go to like saya and Kara's room mm-hmm. and uh you do and you throw open the doors Nobody's there. Uh, you're just running around. It's it's like daytime. You can see that the, I don't know, there are people walking about the courtyard. Um, and then suddenly down the hall, Kristoff uh, just opens up the door and walks down. And he sees you and he's like, uh, I, I thought you were off in the wild. It, did everybody return? Uh... uh. I, I need, I, uh, I need to see as old and you right now. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, where are Kara and Saye? I don't know. Where's Rim? I don't know. I, I need to, I need Why are you covered in blood? I don't know. I don't know. I need help right now. Okay. And he, he comes forward towards you I, and like I puts, puts his arm. Yeah. He puts his arms on your shoulder. Like, like you do with like a trauma victim and he's kind of, he's keeping a firm grasp on you. I look and, at him uh, with, I start to have tears in my eyes. I'm like, where's Aaron? Yeah. And he's like, I, I don't know. I haven't seen him lately. Um, and he, Vlad, Vlad and Vlad appears behind and he's like, go get us old. We don't know what's going on. We have a situation. Go get us old. Uh, grab Valerius too, Where, and he grab just. Grab Aaron. I want to see Aaron. Uh, and Aaron, if he's here, and Vlad's like, he's he's not here, so I I can't sense him anywhere. Uh, oh, okay. Well, he must have. Uh, all right, that's that's fine. Come on, we'll just get you sitting down. He's he's escorting you towards like the council chambers, and Alistar starts like kind of squawking on your shoulder, and it's just sort of goes mute as the situation is unfolding here. And this is where we're leaving the end of the arc. So that is all, folks. How good, oh my God. What happened? Oh my gosh. So you have a new patron. So we are gonna switch all your stuff up. (laughs) My head hurts right now. (laughs) Your head hurts, I'm sorry. 
I have a tension headache at this very moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. So we're going to be changing around your character sheet. I know you've got some new cool Raven Queen stuff that's going to be coming up. And uh, we are getting into our holiday scheduling. So it is going to be a couple weeks till we start arc, uh, or a few weeks until we start arc three, which will be Kara's arc. But yeah, this is the end of Power's Price. Oh my god. You survived! Fuck, man. I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> like like any good i know nobody i know i'm not gonna get any answers but oh my god mm -hmm. nobody can help they're trying oh, <laughs> they're trying to help you fuck. yeah so thank you everybody so much for tuning into this episode uh of the venture maiden this arc 2 finale i have been your dungeon master celeste conowich i'm shook <laughs> I'm your shook. I'm shook. <laughs> um, I have been Arnadella Thill, played by myself, Brittany. I'm sorry. I'm super out of it right now because I have so much to process. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know. I was like, it's always really intense, too, with one-on-one -on -one episodes. You don't want to go too long because... Oh, my God. I Yeah, there's just a lot going on. It is going to be absolute torture and for two weeks. Absolute torture. I can't believe it. Um, yeah, what a fucking game. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, thank you, everybody. I know we're ending up a little bit early, but uh, that's just the way the story goes. So until next time, guys. Are you ready? Don't say We have to say it at the same time, though, this time. Okay. okay. Until next time, you should venture, venture away. away. <laughs> we can't even do it with two I know. people. Oh I know. God. It's my bad. I suck at counting. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, uh, that's a very salty pineapple. That's a 